probably know already, the number of publications is increasing rapidly over years, and it is becoming a problem for us to keep up to date with current states of the research. And to mitigate this problem, there have been some there are some research paper summarization system, so we can keep we can we can consume information faster. However, there is a problem that those summarization systems only focus on English, not any other languages. This can be a problem for researchers like me who don't speak English natively, and this still can be consuming to, to read these summaries. And to this end, we today present a new dataset for extreme research paper summarization in four different languages, German, Italian, Chinese, and Japanese. And in order to evaluate current sets of their summarization systems, we also performed benchmark experiments. So with this data sets, we can start building summarization systems which can support more researchers in the world. So now, now let me start with the background which motivated our project. As you can see in the figure, the number of publications is rapidly increasing over years, and this is becoming a large burden on us. And to tackle this problem, there are some applications proposed from the perspectives of computer science and natural language processing. For example, citation recommendation systems can give you a list of related papers given one query paper. Another example is automatic sentence classification, can classify sentences in papers automatically so we can store information in a more structured way. And finally, scholarly document summarization, which can compress research papers into shorter texts so researchers can scan over the papers more uh, faster. And in this project, we focus on the scholarly document summarization. And the objective of scholarly document, scholarly document summarization is again to create a short summary of research paper which covers, the, covers its essential points. So the researchers can understand the main points of the paper without reading full text of papers or even, even the abstracts. And there are some existing datasets to tackle this task. And here I show you one data sample from a dataset called SkyTLTL. Sky and this dataset provides one sentence short summary of papers. So researchers can, start, researchers can work on building uh, summarization systems. However, there is a problem in, ex in all of the existing datasets that they only focus on English, and they cannot be used to build summarization systems which provide summaries in any other languages. And this can be a problem, again, for researchers like me who don't speak English natively. So even the summary is short, it takes time for me to read these summaries. And to this end, today we present a new dataset called cross site CLDR, the first cross single summary sum cross-lingual scholarly document summarization datasets for four different languages. And this cross site LDR is a cross-lingual extreme summarization datasets of scholarly documents. And this dataset contains summaries in four different languages, German, Italian, Chinese, and Japanese. And these datasets enable us to start building summarization systems, produce summaries in these languages. And this dataset is from two main sources, the, fun, the first portion of the dataset is called cross site LDR post edits, and this is for German, Italian, Chinese. And to collect summaries from for this portion of the this portion of the dataset, we took one existing English dataset called site LDR, and we performed a human machine hybrid trans, translation process called post editing. And another portion of the dataset, which is for Japanese is we collected human written summaries from our online platform. And in the next following few slides, I'll talk about in details about these two portions of our datasets. The first portion of the datasets, which is called cross-TLDR post-edits, as a starting point, we took a dataset called SciTLDR, an English extreme summarization dataset for research papers. And these summaries are written by authors or reviewers and collected from open review platform. And these summaries are one sentence extreme summaries with high, co high compression ratio. In other words, the, 
the number of words in these summaries are very few regarding to, to the original documents which are research papers. And we took this data set and in order to translate summaries into three languages, we follow two-stage procedure. First, we automatically translate the summaries into three languages by using uh, automatic machine translation system. And in order to obtain high quality outputs, we further ask computer science graduate students to fix the outcome from the automatic translation system. And this part of the procedure is called post-editing. And we observed two categories of post-editing performed by the annotators, which I will explain you in next two slides. The first category of post-editing is such cases the machine translation systems simply picked wrong senses. As you can see on the slide, the system translated English expression paper into papier in German, which just means a piece of paper, not a research paper. So the annotator fixed it to article, which fits better in this context. And another category of the post-editing is such cases that we want to keep English expressions rather than translating everything to the target languages. In the example that you can see on the slide, you can see that the system translated uh, English expression word embedding models into Italian equivalents, but uh, researchers don't use this Italian expression, but they use, it, they use the original English expression in Italian conversations. So the annotator put it back to the original English one, word embedding. So in this slide, I, I would like to talk about another portion of the data set called cross CITLDL human. And the data is collected from an online platform called Archive Times, which is actively updated by volunteers. And each post contains a link to a paper and human written extremely short summary. And these summaries are written in Japanese. And this is the statistics of our data sets. As you can see, for the German and Italian and Chinese portion of the data, they have the same amount of data samples as the original English one. And even after the post-editing translation procedure, they keep the high compression ratio the same. And in contrast, for the Japanese portion of the data sets, they contain slightly less, less data samples compared to other languages. And because of the source difference, the summaries tend to contain more words, which lead to lower compression ratio. However, we can still consider the summaries to be extremely short regarding to the original documents, which are research papers. And now we have uh, extremely short summaries for research papers in four different languages. And from now on, I will talk about the benchmark experiments that we did. In the benchmark experiments, we evaluated two types of current sets of their summarization systems. And the first type of the system we evaluated is a two-staged summarized then translates approach, which takes English paper as an input first and summarizes into English summary. Then we translate the output summary into the target language. So as you can see in the figure, there are two separated components one for summarization and one for translation. And for the summarization model, we use a strong deep learning based model called BAT. And we train that model on English site LDR datasets. And for the translate, translation component, we used DeepL, the freely available online uh, machine translation system. And another type of summarization system we, we evaluated is one-step cross-finger summarization, which takes English paper as an input and directly generates a summary in the target language. So in contrast to the previous system, we on, you can see that we only have only one component which performs translation and summarization. And for this underlying model, we use multilingual variant of BAT, and we train that on our new cross-site CLDR training dataset. Since our dataset is relatively small compared to other general purpose summarization datasets, 
we also evaluated two variants of intermediate fine tuning. So before we train our model on our dataset cross site CIDR, we performed another training so we can inject related knowledge into the model. The first variant of intermediate fine tuning is called cross linear summarization plus MT. So as you can see in the figure, we train the model to translate English paper to in English paper into the paper in the target language. So we teach a model how to perform the translation. And in the second variant of intermediate fine tuning, which is called cross single summarization plus English summarization, we train a model to summarize the English paper into English summary. So we teach the model how to perform the summarization. We formulated our results from the experiments to answer following three questions. The first question is, which of summarized and translates approach or direct cross, direct cross linear approach summarization perform better? The second question is, does intermediate fine tuning help at all? The last question is, how much training data do we need for direct cross linear summarization? So now we can see the results related to research question number one and two. As you can see, the summarized then translates approach is better for German and Chinese portions of the data sets. However, not for Italian and Japanese. We speculate, we speculate that this is due to this style difference in summaries. As we saw that in statistics, Japanese summaries tend to contain more words, which lead to the gap from the original English one. And the Italian one, the data source is the same as the original English one, but we observed that post-editing happened more often in Italian portion compared to other two languages. And this can be a problem because in the summarize then translates approach, the summarization module is trained on the original English data sets. And finally, we can see that machine translation based intermediate fine tuning helps in all the languages, which indicates that having some cross lingual data sets additionally can be beneficial. And in this slide, we can see results related to the final question. How much training data do we need? As you can see on the table, the, if we don't have any of the cross-site CLDI data set, the model performs poorly, even with the intermediate fine tuning. And this indicates that cross linear transfer can be a challenging task in our data sets. And as you can see on the figure on the right side, if we have even 1% of the training data from our data sets, the model improves perform substantially. And we can also see that having intermediate fine tuning, models can learn with less data. To conclude, in, in this presentation, we presented a new data set called Cross-Site CLDL, the first cross lingual research paper summarization data sets in four different languages. German, Italian, and Chinese and Japanese. And we also evaluated the current sets of the summarization system. And yeah, with using these data sets, we can start building summarization systems which can support more researchers in the world. And from the link in the middle, you can, e you can easily download our data set and start your experiments right away. And from the QR code on the top, it takes you to a link of related information. And finally, I would like to thank to SIGAIA Student Travel Grant, which supports my trip during this conference. And thank you very much for your attention.